I think we're live. You guys there? Yes, no, maybe. Something in the chat. Everything's popping up. New Mids Watch Live. Welcome. If you're seeing this live, it's good to see you guys. Uh, if you're catching this after the fact, you're probably either watching it for the couple days that I leave them up online or you're in Patreon, which I've left these. It's like a nice little thing. I got to remind myself if this is not part of a playlist that you can easily scan through on there, I should make it so. This one's easy. Honest. I mean, it's not easy, but it's it's. The part I love about these kind of field reports is like it's small things, small things with like 18 red pilled concepts in them. And then a lot of guys, they just don't know how to map things. <laughs> Fuck, man, I turned off anime for this. <laughs> yeah, what can I say? But yeah, it's just a small example of some dude in the shower and his wife getting pissy at him. And it kind of basically turns into an entire critique about the drunken captain model. But it's, it's neat to know. But like I said, for some small five minute example, there's 10,000 words, 18 concepts that a guy has to keep in his head. But once you understand it all, it's like such a super easy thing. Anyway, same rules as last time. Hey, what's going on, guys? Same rules as last time. I'm going to ignore you guys while I do the recording so I don't lose my train of thought. Once I'm finished, we'll back to the chat. So if you got like questions, throw a super chat out. Do what you do. Just be aware. I won't answer it until about half an hour through once I'm finished with what we're doing here. <laughs> Why aren't more good guys going overseas to get good women? Dude, the grass is greener where you water it, man. That's it. If women are so much better in, in the Ukraine, why isn't Roosh back here with a trad wife? You know? I'll just leave it there. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start recording now, and I'll see you guys in a second. Welcome, fellas. One more mids watch. This one, stupid simple. Man in the shower, argumentative wife, what do? Turns out for such a small example of a guy in a fitness test, there is a huge amount of like red-pilled material that he could have used to learn in a situation here, and that's kind of the key to it. Like there's no giant red pill battle between good and evil or any nonsense like that. It's just small situations, a bunch of disparate comp uh, concepts, and then you applying them. In your relationship almost instinctively like i know everybody watches the giant rollo live streams where he talks about like he doesn't have to game his wife anymore he is the game and a lot of people take that and like you know it's got some theatrics to it it's like oh it's super he's some super chat alpha it's like no you just after a while you instinctively know how to do this stuff and that's kind of where i want guys to get ideally if they're doing this properly and so this is a good example of so, you know, some small setbacks that guys will have and then some of the things they can learn from it. There's going to be a couple concepts in here I wanted to focus on. The first is the, out of the dysfunctional captains, which is the three dysfunctional captains. Every failing relationship or dead bedroom always tends to have like one of these three archetypes in it. So, and you'll usually have two guys that enter into those situations. You know, the guy who used to be the Chad, and then the guy who used to be like the plow horse, you know, saving the best, that kind of stuff. But it's funny, no matter how successful or unsuccessful a guy is, you get into these relationship situations, you always end up in one of those three archetypes, unless you have a good relationship going, which, you know, may be the case. But if it, if it was going great, then you probably aren't here finding out why the hell is it my wife and I won't smash. And then finally, just a bit on the nature of manipulation. I think those are important. So this one, unlimited egos with his did I mess up? A possible failed fitness test. So he's busy with his kid. Wife was in the shower. She comes down and says, look, I don't care if you want to listen to music when I'm showering, but it's so loud that it almost wakes up the baby, which is a manipulative way of saying, turn down your music when you're showering. So it's pretty loud down here. There was no please or anything. So she follows this with a, so now you don't listen to me when I talk to you. You said I could talk to you about anything. And I responded quite calmly. Pausing this right now. Big tell. Big tell in a field report. When a guy says, I responded calmly, or I responded without anger, whenever he has to add that little, like, uh, adjective or adverb to how he responded, he's making a point to let you know he, he broke frame. He doesn't have frame. That's one of those things, I don't know why it happens, 
All I know is every guy does it. As soon as they say how they responded, as opposed to just responding, you can tell right away that the guy's buckling, emotionally buckling. And he says, I responded quite calmly, like you can, but not with that tone of voice. And she's barely talked to me since, which I've played off as not bothered, as not bothering me. So I get more time to get stuff done around the house. But deep inside, the beta in me sees mommy's not happy due to my childhood conditioning. Now, I know I'm not responsible for her emotions, and she has a right to be angry about whatever she wants. But I hope this is a great beginning of setting boundaries for myself. Nobody gets to talk to me that way. Couple thoughts before we get started here. So when I talk about the drunk captain, there's three different archetypes of it. There is the uh, the derelict captain and the first officer who has begrudgingly had to take over. That's a guy who just got you know lazy and doesn't provide any value to the relationship. Eventually, the relationship will break down. It's a standard, Brifault's law. The in a relationship, it's the it's the female of the species, not the male, that defines the terms of it. When there's no benefit for the female, there's no relationship. And everybody thinks that's like some MGTOW talking points. Oh, that just means girls only want you for money. It's not necessarily true. Girls want guys for a lot of things. And I think it's a perfectly reasonable expectation. Like, what do you think a girl wants in a relationship? Nothing. She's just so horny. She has to be there for the rest of her life. It's like she's a human being and human beings respond to incentives. And you just have to be aware of that. Second one is the plow horse captain with his constantly complaining passenger. Nothing is ever good enough, and he's trying his best to make her happy, and he's just failing on all fronts. And it's kind of where this guy's going. The third type is the the captain and her husband, and that's the kind of girl that, from childhood trauma or whatever reason, doesn't want a guy who's in charge. She wants a floor mat, something to feel safe around. Those guys, when they get their act together and start having fulfilling lives, they end up kind of destroying their marriages from it. But at that point, it's, it's not the kind of one they want anyway. So having said that, keeping those in mind and move on again quoting jack 10 again because he's next to i can't tell between him and me which ones were the more prolific posters within the married red pill like it's 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 neck and neck between the two of us there's probably a million words on that subreddit about all kinds of things so he, he addresses the thing where the guy's talking about you know treating his wife's emotions walking on eggshells whatever reference you got he goes i don't think it's this it's probably that she had a legitimate issue, acted testy and unpleasant when she brought it up, and got exasperated that you arbitrarily started playing tone police, which is pretty fucking annoying. And then Ops, you know, I have a great beginning of this, hoping to set boundaries for myself. He's like, yeah, okay, boundaries. You've been on the other side of having boundaries set before, right? Your work or town imposes some new red tape on something you want to do. You hate having to go to the DMV. But why is that? Well, it's because whenever you need to go there and do something simple, like renew your license, inevitably some DMV agent says, actually, sir, you don't renew that this desk anymore. You need to go to the other one. And you'll also need to fill out these forms in triplicate and come on a Tuesday or Wednesday between 10 and 12. And then you'll have to also register online first at you know this site, assuming you can navigate the broken website that looks like it was built in 97, even though we actually used $40 million of your tax dollars to have the sub 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 subcontractor make it. It's annoying, right? But that's the boundary. The totally arbitrary and seemingly unnecessary boundary. And he ties this in with that wife's quote. It's like, so now you don't want to listen to me when I talk to you. You said I could say to you anything. So I assume this, like you said you could tell me anything, was based on a conversation you guys had in the past where you told her you're not a mind reader, and if she had some problems with something, she needs to be overt and explicit. Now, let's put aside the fact that having this conversation with your wife or your girlfriend is almost amusingly naive. Realize that boundaries are meaningless without authority, and authority comes with responsibilities. I suspect that you have a long history of drunk captaining, and I'll point out one of your comments to another thread to indicate this. And he references one of the guy's previous field reports. She makes comments on my diet. We were going out with our friends last night, and she was being shitty. What are you going to do about your diet? I said, I'm going to eat some pizza if you must know. But isn't that against your diet? And he said, yes. And then she tried to start in more. Because it's not her fucking problem to worry about my diet. Like, come on, champ. This isn't rocket science. Women do passive-aggressive shit like this because that's how they communicate. It's almost stupidly transparent to me that your wife is saying, I'm upset 
that you're once again abandoning yet another goal, and I'm disappointed because it just seems like you're following the same pattern of irresponsibility despite your grand proclamations that this time it was really different. Now, it would be nice if she just said that, but chances are that A, she's not even consciously aware that this is why she's reacting so hostile to you eating pizza or leaving your music on when you're showering, and B, if you stop eating pizza because she said this, then you're not actually responsible. You're not having agency. You're just acting responsible because of something she said, which isn't very responsible at all. And to the boundary. Nobody gets to talk to me this way. Nobody. Yeah, see, that's not how this works. I mean, it's all well and good to have boundaries like don't be shitty with me when you want to request that I stop doing something, or if you're shitting with me, then the conversation's over. But if you just abruptly start acting like these boundaries have been in place all along and give your wife zero context for why you've placed them, then you know what? It's actually childish behavior. The same way a seven-year-old starts wailing like, I can only wear red shirts, or I only want a spoon to eat dinner. No fucking rhyme or reason. No basis for authority to make these demands. Just a kid throwing a tantrum. I mean, does he get what he wants? Sure. The adults let him wear all red shirts and eat the salad with the spoon because they're indulging him in the hope that maybe he'll shut up for 10 minutes and leave them alone. The next part was like that deep inside me beta sees mommy is not happy due to my childhood conditioning. Like really? Deep beta? No, man. You're feeling like mommy's not happy because you threw a tantrum and your wife responded like mom. That's why you're here, right? Like, you know, even if there was a canonically correct red pill way to respond to this fitness test, whatever you did was not that. Now, as often as the pattern happens when I comment, I'll be mixed among a sea of other Redditors saying, you know, way to go, champ. Yeah, fuck that wife. That bitch. Whammon, am I right? And her shitty attitude. And they might be right. But let me propose an alternative for you. By the way, side note on this one. There was a lot of, like, uh, don't put up with that bullshit comments in here. A lot of bravado, but it is what it is. So first, you want to enforce a new boundary. Don't do it when somebody is aware of that boundary and they're already stepping over. Going back to the DMV example, the reason that scenario is so fucking annoying was not because of the stupid jumps you have to go through, but because they only told you about the jumps when you had jumped through some other hoops. So in this case, maybe just an arch of an eyebrow and say, you know, you okay? Your wife will become exasperated and say, what the hell? Am I okay? Yeah, I'm okay. Well, I would be if you keep the music down when you shower, then you say, you know, you seem pretty upset about this. I'm going to take out the trash, so hold that thought. You go take out the trash. Your wife gets to collect her thoughts a bit, and then when you return, her tone will be less shitty. She'll say, look, I'm upset because I like you to feel things, or like you to do things. And I like you to not forget that we have a baby that's trying to sleep. It's just taxing to remind you to be considerate about that every day. Now this, this here is fogging. Straight out of when I say no, I feel guilty. And this is why it works. You peel the way the layers of the shit test onion and figure out why she's being shitty and respond accordingly. In his example, as expected, she thinks that you're just a drunk captain. Now maybe you've actually been good captain, and you push back and say, yeah, I don't think that's very fair. And that's why I keep telling you to stop breastfeeding. That's Our kid is almost one, and at this point, it's just, you know, screwing up your sleep and causing you to be pretty short-tempered. If you've been good captaining, your suggestion should be seen on its merits. Or maybe you end up sidebarring into a completely separate conversation about wearing weaning off of breastfeeding, and your wife thanks you for being so calm and putting up with her craziness. But if you've been drunk captaining, then you have absolutely no authority to do any of this. Your wife doesn't see you as leading the household, so she's not particularly going to care or respect whatever voice tones that you demand. Now, that doesn't mean you should just eat the shit test and comply. But if there's some truth to you're slacking off when it comes to general household management and child care characterization, then you need to recognize that you only have so much authority, aka not much, to set a boundary here. So your best move, I'd say, is just try to agree and amplify. Well, and you're really going to be pissed when you try to meet the guys coming over for band practice tonight. You know, maybe she laughs and says, I'm serious. And you're like, I know you are. I got it. I got it. Kiss her on the forehead. Take out some trash and think about ways to maybe stop being such a prick that keeps the baby up with loud music. 
And this is why Op is struggling to come up with a right answer to this test. His prior behavior is not giving him good options. It's like playing one of those text-based video games. Those muds that look like this. You cross the river and follow a path into a forest. The forest path eventually grows narrower and narrower until it disappears entirely. And just as you try to get your bearings, you hear a loud howl and you're surrounded by a pack of wolves. They snarl at you and scare menacing at you. Like, what do you do? Bury a hole in the ground and stick your head in there? Do you run away like a bitch? Or do you start dancing an elven jig and hoping it, it distracts them? And he makes an example here too where he crosses off some examples that would have been good if the guy had had his act together and prepared, right? Like, you know, toss him some bones, you savage or you salvage from a buffalo you killed earlier, use your malice, magical talisman to turn invisible, unsheath your longsword and unstrap your shield. Like, it's pretty tough to get out of that scenario, right? When all your good options are taken away. I mean, I hope you kept up your dancing skills, Bilbo. So there's a couple points to this one. The first one is, and I know it's a, it's a red pill thing. There is no responsibility without authority, right? Absolutely true. Whoever wants to dissolve the marriage can dissolve it. Divorce law caters to the one who does the least amount of work. So if you're living in a male-dominated paradigm where the man works and the girl provides kids at home, all you're doing is telling the courts is that if she's bored and wants to leave me, well, then I've made an agreement with the law to take care of her for the rest of her life, and she doesn't have to sleep with me. Of course, that sounds like a crappy deal, but it's the same as that elven jig thing right there. If you've closed off all of your good options, then any options you do have sound just horrific. Now, it's going to be a case to making the wife work, which isn't really applicable to this, but it's. But you see where we're going with this example here? Your authority comes from responsibility. But responsibility isn't just you do more for her. That's not responsibility. Responsibility is, in this case, a soft power. Like your wife feeling comfortable with you, your wife uh, being happy with you, your wife having that tingle because you act enough alpha to make her attracted to you, you being the good, considerate person in the house. All these alpha and beta qualities all amalgamate into what is seen as soft power. Like a girl who is into you will submit to you. They absolutely will, because they trust you. Trust is important. At the same time, they also respect you. That's because that's what the alpha comes in. They get those tingles. Oh, this guy's the hottest man in my life. That's how hypergamy works. Hypergamy is monogamy. It's a great post by Whisper on this one, by the way, if you guys have never seen it. Essentially, girls, their hypergamous instincts to always find their best, and when they found their best, they're fiercely loyal to him. It's the alpha side of things. The beta side of things is... You know, you don't want to be in that situation where oh, I love this guy with all my heart, but like he's impossible to live with. You, you'd be surprised. A lot of divorces have happened because even though a girl was madly in love with the guy, like the alpha way side of things, it was just impossible to live. So I think I used an example a few episodes ago of a girl wants a tiger in the house. But, you know, you can't have a tiger in your house if it just rips off all your furniture and eats your dog. You have to tame the tiger. But then when you tame the tiger, you lose the part of the tiger that made it interesting to have in the first place. But if you bring a tiger in the house and all it does is tiger shit, then you can't have it in the house. It's got to stay. It's an outside tiger. But you see these like little dynamics here, and that's why you want to kind of strive for a balance. I'm not saying 50-50. In fact, I'd probably argue because life is so easy right now, you're probably going to want something more like a 70-30, whatever the hell that means. I'm not going to quantify it, just to let you know. Like, when in doubt, lean on the alpha side. But in his case, you just have to be aware... That that, uh, that competence, that comfort, the beta side of things, is how he could derive his authority in this situation. And once you have that authority, once she sees you as a hypergamous best option, and not that tiger that's ripping shit up in the house, then you can set boundaries like this. Don't come at me with this shit. You can cock an eyebrow and say, shut up, and she'll actually shut up. Because that trust has already been established. And that's, there's no authority from that. It's strictly voluntary authority. And everybody's blabbing on about genuine desire, even though I don't agree the term exists. But this is about as close as you're going to get to genuine desire. Somebody deferring to you because they want to. That's true leadership. And there's not a law in the land. There is not a divorce law that's on the books that you can remove. Nothing that'll get you that. Only your own two hands, your balls, and a little bit of action on your part. So to end this, I'm going to do it on, a, on the male hamster and manipulation so the male hamster is funny like do you see this guy he's got all these weird 
ideas of what should work like is this a shit test is this a fitness test and you're like no like a lot of guys screw this one up that's why i'm, I'm trying to lean towards calling it a fitness test now a sexual fitness test as opposed to a shit test because guys think anytime a girl acts bitchy it's a shit test it's like no girls do passive communication that's what they do so side eye uh silent treatment passive aggressive stuff sarcasm that's female conversation style i'm not saying it, guys can't use it but that's how women predominantly communicate by the time they use direct communication it's already done it's too late they're out of options it's like a desperate play it's like a hail mary so by sitting here saying i don't want you to talk to me like a woman is a boundary that shows your hamster's running in overdrive i want this girl to act like a boy think of it like uh remember that thing i always say this one atlas how atlas didn't ask for a lighter load but stronger shoulders this is the case of atlas asking for a lighter load and that's how the male hamster work we always just find a way to to fan daggle their women i want you to act like a man for me would you no homo right fair enough and then the last point is manipulation a lot of people will say isn't this very manipulative you have to act a certain way do a certain thing your wife yells at you to get you to do like this is all manipulation it's bad it's evil right and i'm here to say everything's manipulation anytime you do something another person will respond to it that's manipulative if you if your wife is hungry she says i'm hungry and then you jump up to go make dinner she just manipulated you to it just because you want to make her happy not a bad thing maybe it's your turn to cook dinner Maybe you're the cook of the house. Maybe you like cooking. Maybe you're already cooking something and it's very easy to make a second helping. Was the manipulation bad? Arguably, no. Now, if it's that same situation and it's a girl that hasn't slept with you in two years and called you an asshole in front of your friends, maybe she can go fuck herself and go to Subway. That's fair, too. But that's the point. Manipulation isn't good or bad. It's just a tool. And in her case, is it manipulative to say, look, stop playing the music so loud when the baby's trying to sleep? Yeah, it's manipulative. You're appealing to, like, aren't you a good father? But in this case, do you want your baby to sleep? Probably. So is it bad manipulation? Probably not. But that's the thing. Once you get these situations, instead of just thinking, I want a lighter load. I need you to come at me, but you only be nice and calm and sweet and speak your mind and never speak like a woman and never be passive aggressive. And then once you've made all these things, so you've made it super easy, like a cheat code, then I'll address it. And a lot of guys think that's going to fix their problems. And on the off chance that somebody actually does that, actually accommodates all your stupid DMV laws, the simple form and triplicate, and they make it so it's a softball. You can hit it out of the park. What's the guy do? I guarantee you, these guys here who have not built their broader shoulders, learned how to deal with these things, learned how to use the green amplify or fogging in their situations, they're going to fuck that one up too. You're going to give them the most easy situation to get out of, and they will absolutely screw it up. If you don't believe me, I just did an episode where I talked about a guy going Rambo. The girl literally walked up, dressed seductively, ready to go down on him, and somehow turned that into a loss. So there's like, what's that Einstein quote about, uh, there's only two infinite things, the universe and human stupidity, and I'm not sure about the universe? Yeah, there's the example right there. So... Take this one for what it's worth. Small shower, turn off the music, but it kind of encompasses everything we have here. Authority and responsibility are intertwined, and don't believe guys when they say there's no authority. There's authority, but there's just no hard power authority. There's a soft power authority, and you can wield it because women are hardwired to defer to it if you get that right balance of alpha and beta tingles. And for the ones that don't respond to it, well then those same th skills you're using now we're going to give you the kind of options to replace that girl with one that's more than happy to submit to that kind of frame. But that's a whole other conversation. So I will catch you guys on the next conversation. Take care. Cheers. All right. Where'd I leave off on that one? Let's see what you guys are doing on the questions. <laughs> Join things and be charming. Thank you, Ryan. Oh, yeah, I remember you, Dogmatic. Thank you for the super chat, by the way. In chat, yeah. Uh, if you guys don't know, he was a guy, he was, like, left some really shitty situations, and now he's having some trouble getting status. And I, I know it sounds, it's like, it's not, it's simple, but it's not easy. I've talked about this before, where it's, um, male social matrix. Like, how, like, the top 20% of the men are the ones that get 80% of the sex. You know that saying, right? And everybody's like, oh, that means that 
80% of guys are just tragic losers. And it's like, it's not the case, man. That's per situation. So like at the bar, the bouncers and the one hot guy at the club are the only ones getting laid. At the office, it's only that predatory senior director that's getting laid with the interns. At the concert, it's only the band and the roadies getting head. But that's the thing, right? Like every situation has its own matrix and its own Pareto principle. And the way to maximize your status is to join multiple ones, of which some of them you're going to thrive in, some of them you're going to not. I mean, you can't alpha everything. And then those ones that you thrive, you just double down on them. But it's, it's just like a numbers game, same as anything, right? But yeah, you'd be surprised. Just being pleasant company will cover up for all kinds of incompetence. Like we're in a land of abundance right now. Case in point, you can have a president of the United States completely fuck up a, an exodus from a war-torn country, get a whole bunch of people killed, and they could be on vacation at the time and not care. So don't tell me hierarchies are all built on competence. They're just not. Um, yeah, so John, this will be posted later as a mids watch. John from MLD is using Red Meat Content Creator PBP Breakdown on that Rolo covered video last night. Yeah, he was supposed to go on with him too. They were doing, if you guys don't know, this is, if you listen to this after the fact, there was a, uh, uh, a petty red meat beef between two content creators. There was Fresh and Fit and Abba and Preach. I guess uh, Fit called Preach's wife a beluga whale and he made fun of his country. To which those guys said, hey, remember these screenshots you took with that girl where you said uh, she can come on your podcast, but she has to sleep with you first. And then you had a temper tantrum. And then you threatened, you wanted to box me because you were so pissed off and I was going to give you $20 to do it and you backed out. Just a bunch of nonsense drama. But anyways, Rolo addressed it afterwards and with his too much, too soon, too fast speech. And John was supposed to come on there, but he's on Tokyo Standard Time, so who knows. But yeah, it'd probably be fun. <laughs> John from MLD is the only person in the sphere who will stream longer than Rolo did. That's the one thing I like. I hate, I, I mean, I, I like it and I hate it. I like how like the Rule Zero guys are making a shit ton of really good content for guys to enjoy and learn from. But that's the problem is that we all create so much. It's like we can't help but step on each other's things. But the reason I like John and Rolo's big long ones is they can start a live stream. I could start one and finish one and then go and catch the last half of theirs. <laughs> I'm still digesting Rolo's stream from last night. Yeah, I mean, look, you know what? Rolo and I are going to disagree pretty heavy on this one. I think the entire thing is just an example of kayfabe. I think it is an example of kayfabe. I think it's an example of emotionalism. I think it is an example of how gullible an audience is. And I think that by caring about it, the only lesson you could pull from that is how easy men are to manipulate. There's my take from it. Nobody learns anything from either of those. But they are learning that if you're emotional, you're more likely to give somebody your attention. And that's why, like I said, this is a small channel and these are big channels. I'll leave it at that. And if you're picking a side, it's no different than saying like, you know, my sports team. It's like, they're not yours. You're paying their salaries. They're not paying yours. But whatever. I'm not, I'm not above doing red meat. You guys have attention and I get it. I mean, just by giving the audience what they want, you can't fault the guy for it. You can't fault the crackhead for giving people crack. They're the ones that wanted crack, not him. Evan Jig example, Google Rick Astley's never going to give you up. Uh, am I stoned? No, I'm just calm. I've had a good night's sleep. That's probably the issue. Actually, fun fact, since Canada has made, has made weed illegal, I've just never, never smoked. I don't know. I think we have some lying in the house somewhere. It's been just sitting there in a box. I couldn't even find it now if I wanted to. Uh, yeah, for me, it was, I just parents were big on it and then i wanted to rebel against the family go to university and retired a buddy out of the military took him to amsterdam for a trip it was fun but i'm like eh, just puts me to sleep so not really my thing i'm more of a drinker and honestly i've learned more about this leadership from this space than elsewhere dante i'm glad to hear that man uh, then we got Muhammad, just doing what I see fit. So I came here, here to fix myself, ready in a possible future. The knowledge could be useful. Didn't want to repeat and make the same mistake. Yeah, honestly, you're not going to, like, there is an infinite amount of situations, and you're not going to be able to learn all of the situations. So just focus on the principles, right? Focus on the strategies. What's fogging for? 
what's agree and amplify for, what's amuse mastery, what's a pressure flip, what's a neg, um, some basic stuff like what's a what's a standard like pickup routine, uh, what's a fitness test, what's a comfort test, the alpha bucks, beta fuck. Like once you get all these mental models in place, you kind of know them well enough that when something happens in your life, you can kind of have a running tally in your head. You're like, oh wait, that's probably like this, and that's how like these field reports. Like Jack basically just shows takes your life. He's like, here's 18 of the different mental models that would have applied to this. And if you keep these things in mind when situations like this come up, you don't have to think like, what should I say? The answer just becomes obvious, right? Yeah, as long as you're able to keep paying the bills, stay small. Well, I mean, I want to get, I wouldn't mind getting big. I wouldn't complain. But my first love is author. So the second book, I, if I get big, I get big. If I don't, I don't. Um, I see no benefit in getting drawn into the drama as a viewer, but I see why Rolo addresses this stuff. Well, yeah, the same reason that I'll address it. <laughs> Pays the bills. <laughs> uh, can you recommend reading for us? So funny enough, Johnny Neo, my entire playlist, the sidebar series, is basically a collection of reading material for you. It's when I say, you know, I feel guilty. Rob I, uh, Robert Glover. Dr. Robert Glover. No more, or ask no more Mr. Nice Guy. When I say no, I feel guilty is Dr. Manuel Smith. Practical Female Psychology for the Practical Man, David Clare and Franco. Uh, it's just basically go into it and then all the stuff there. Uh, Critical Drinker is a great channel. I don't mind it. I don't find he's as good at uh, movie critique as say like Red Letter Media is, but that's because those guys actually like it as an art form. Critical Jinker just kind of has hot takes on it. He's like if uh, he's like if Cinema Sins wasn't absolute trash. <laughs> uh, pressure flip is when you're trying to flip an omelet without turning into scrambled eggs. Oh hush, oh hush. Let's get Ryan to a hundred thousand subs. Isn't that the gold standard? Hundred thousand, then I get the plaque. I guess that's the one goal you should kind of always want is to have that little YouTube plaque in the back. At least says I'm big enough to get something done. Go on fresh and fit. Request a boxing match. Easy, one hundred thousand subs. Yeah, to be fair, I've never, I've never asked to be on fresh and fit, and I'm almost positive they're not going to ask me to be on there. But as a thought experiment, what would I do on yelling at drunk chicks the podcast? It's something that I don't see anybody do, and I'm surprised people aren't doing it. Especially the red pill guys in that channel. You got a bunch of guys talking about being red pills, examples of men joining a private community. Not one guy goes on there just to be charming and pleasant and show what a successful man who took the red pill can do with his life. Not a single guy. Everybody falls into that same trap because that's the thing. You're going to get a bunch of drunk chicks saying some nonsense and I want you to lecture them like you're their fucking dad. And, I'm, and then I'm going to kick them out of the studio when they get mad at me. And I'm like, why would you do any of that, man? Like I said, you're talking to a brick wall. Are you going to be Stefan Molyneux talking about a girl with egg cartons every time she brings up something that makes no sense? Like, you've been around. And that's what I think with a lot of these guys. Like, you guys know better. But they're not talking to the girls. They're preaching to the audience. And then the audience is looking at that like, hey, that's my bitch ex-wife. That's that girl that cheated on me. Yeah, Tate, you tell her what's up. Or, yeah, Rolo, you lecture her. Or, yeah, what's the other one? Adams? Kevin Samuels? Yeah, man, you wear that suit like Jordan Peterson. You tell her she's wasting her youth. Yeah. Get that bitch. So yeah, my thing there it would just, you know, dress nice. Make some make some fun fucking nags. Oh, it's a nice shirt. It's almost as nice as hers, or you know, whatever, and be pleasant. Show you can be charming. Charming will get you far in life. Have the girls hanging on every word. Although from what I hear, they're all just like OnlyFans girls clout chasing, so I'm just like, eh. It would probably be a waste of time, but Oh, so that's actually kind of, I totally didn't know that. Yeah, Sterling Cooper's been on one. It's the only ones I've seen on Fresh and Fit who really held frame and was completely comfortable. Dude, that's awesome. I actually, I'd expect that from Sterling. Sterling, I, out of all the guys I've kind of like met in this space, Sterling was the first one that I actually had to ask him. I'm like, dude, why are you here? He goes, what? I'm like, everybody here has something. Something's wrong with them. They're a little angry. They got some like personal issues. It's like, why are you here? For a porn star, you seem very well adjusted. You don't do drugs. You're charming and pleasant to talk to. You clearly know how to deal with women. He goes, same as you, man. And I'm like, what? You got the military fucked you? And he goes, no, no, no. 
same thing. You just had a yeah, improper, you know, idea of what women were. We actually had that on, I did a podcast on here with them. It's under the fundamentals playlist, but yeah. I mean, what are you going to show to a guy who has, you know, Pornhub videos and his dicks on the internet? You're probably not going to surprise him. And these girls talking trash. He's like, I've heard this 500 times from people earning a lot more money than you showing off their asshole. So like, whatever. And I thought good for him. Yeah, it's good. Always a good example. He may not have like idea. I may not agree. I know he wants to have his like soft harem out in the woods thing. And like, I don't agree with that stuff and his plan, but that's his plan. I don't really care. But as a guy, I would be hard pressed to find a better example of an alpha male in the wild than Sterling. And what can I say? When he's paid to have sex for a living, can you can you be surprised? Hmm. Uh, a camera changes everything as well. Some people seem to forget that with those shows. Yeah, they do. Uh, Cortez, what about the Bachelor guy at Fresh and Fit? That was an exception in my opinion. Most of the other, to, I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I've never watched it. On Twitter, they'll occasionally have like a "Hey, join up now" thing in my feed that somebody retweets. The sound is off and I see like 30 seconds of everybody sitting around a table. You know, Myron will be texting on his phone on the one side and then some other side, some girl is talking here. And then whoever the guest is, is running their mouth, moving their arms all fancy. But I don't, I don't ever listen to it. The fact though, that I can nail the format so goddamn well, never having watched it should kind of tell you how like predictable this stuff is. Just something to think about. <laughs> it takes drink, but that's not my business. And here, Edgar, I don't want to turn this into like just a, a dunking on fresh and fit. That's not the point. Like, I don't care enough other than to use it as an example for you guys. But I don't have the need to dogpile on them. Like right now, they got their own problems. They're leaking subs. They don't need me. <laughs> they can dogpile on themselves. Yeah. Oh, but guaranteed, most of the subscribers are young. But that's the thing, right? Like we talked in this real report and the other field report, guys in their 20s. Stupidest takes, but it's just because they don't know any better, man. And that's kind of the idea of having older brothers, a group of community, you know, a boss that takes you under his wing, mentors, that sort of shit, dad. They're all there to kind of help these guys, guide them through their piss and vinegar, high T, early 20s when they're trying to make some content for themselves, right? But that's the problem is that all those male authority figures are gone right now because, well, for various reasons. And so guys are having to figure out themselves. And that's when you end up with... It's a great quote, and I can't remember who said it, but it was a pickup quote, I'm pretty sure, not even a red pill quote, where um, if you look at the American, it was an American saying, if you look at the black community, that's going to be the American community in 10 years, basically saying they were ahead of the curve. And sure enough, you're at that point now. And what happened in the black community, there was like a, the welfare state kind of broke up families. Like, I'm sure you guys, if you guys haven't heard of it, go look into this. I'm not about to go give a, a thing about American socioeconomics, but um you ended up with guys without fathers and they adopted two models. They either went all alpha or all beta. So like that's the thug masculinity, hyper aggressive, you know, criminal, super attractive, knock any girl up. I don't wear condoms, that kind of thing. Or they went the other way where they were like the patriarch, the, the absolute softest, sweetest man ever, super strong, that kind of thing. And that's how they went with it. And sure enough, Without guidance, guys will just pick an extreme and go with it because guys have no. Oh, thanks, man. Digital Ryan's better than Ryan Stone. Yeah, he's good people and just have no ability to navigate these things. And they're just fumbling through running instincts run on a thing. And that's where we're at now. So whatever. That's yeah, like Icarus. When you fly too close to the sun, you come back down hard. Absolutely. Do you think not having an older brother or being an only child can give you some sort of the same issues as a kid in a single mother household can live? No raindrop thinks it's responsible for the flood, man. <laughs> you guys are jerks. Like, there is no singular issue that's causing a single guy to be unhappy in whatever way it is. Part of its organizations let him down. Part of its manipulation from mass media. Part of its, you know, broken household. Or I, I want to say a broken household because divorced guys with very engaged dads and good, you know, visitation tend to solve that problem pretty well too. So just like no father figures in the house, maybe no older brothers, no guidance, no mentorship. Sometimes guys are just ridiculous and like they were going to fail regardless. You have to give them everything and they'll end up still doing crack and then leaving their laptop around just before the election, you know? 
I could look at the why forever, but you can't prove it. And even if you could, there's going to be so many exceptions, it's a waste of time. So just realize it is where it is. And that's why I like this part of book two that I love is I call them like uh, the the has-beens and the never-was or like the the, the fallen alpha and the, the plow horse beta. The point is there's this guy who got like, he's total Chad his entire life. Sex came easy. Relationships were simple. He never have to think of anything. He just naturally picked up on all the stuff at an early age and rode the success train. Now he's like in his 40s or his 50s. He's maybe been in an accident. He's lost. He's gained some weight. He's not as cool as he once was. And he ends up in the exact same situation as the guy who didn't get anything in his 20s. He had no success with women early on. He worked hard. And then finally, once girls hit 30, they're like, now I want to settle down and have a family. And this is the guy I want. And he just never gets sex from her, never gets respect, any of that shit. Those guys always end up in the exact same place, even though they're completely opposite sides of like the 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 sexual hierarchy super successful super unsuccessful hard working doesn't have to work you know digital ryan versus ryan cage match who you got well i don't know here's the question my first my 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 first minecraft edited video versus uh my feminist emily video who wins in the editing war hmm? you guys are a bunch of weirdos anyways i'm gonna end this one right now i guess john's doing his live stream so go check it out uh do i want to do the third one I might. Let me take a look here. Let me see how long this one is. Come on, man. Stupid window not giving me what I need. Critique evaluates. The guy deleted his thing. Schedule sex. Yeah, this one's nice and snappy. I'm going to do this one too. So I'm going to set up the third one. I'll do the recording. And then that's going to be it for the week. And I got to edit these ones. And don't forget the ones on Thursday. Do check out the recorded one I have that just came out at midnight. Like I said, these things all eventually turn into that. So much better. So I'll be about 10 minutes. I'm just going to set up and I'll see you guys in a minute.